My name is George Willis, and I am a member of the Casper Rising Chapter of the Sons of the American Revolution, which means in Carrollton, Georgia. That chapter was established, I think, about 2001. Uh, we are about four, close to 40 members now. Uh, I represent the chapter now as Secretary uh, Treasurer. I've been President of the chapter. Uh, I just, in the end of March, completed the term as the uh, State Society President for the Sons of the American Revolution in Georgia. And some things there that I'm going to talk to you about uh, that, uh, in general and some local projects and things that we're trying to do. The Sons of the American Revolution is a society of men who can trace their ancestry back to a patriot who served in the revolution, who was uh, like a member of, say, one of the committees of safety or the Continental Congress. And it doesn't necessarily, typically you think of it as that person having to be a man. But I signed, as state president, I signed several certificates whose men, of men who got in whose ancestors were women who were recognized for their patriotic activities at the time of the American Revolution. So it's, it, was a, it was surprising to me, but then it's a common occurrence uh, to go to, there are books that include women patriots of the American Revolution. So it's, uh, you women can't be totally left out even with the DAR. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we are an inter international society. We have about 28,000 members across the world, most of them, of course, in the United States. Uh, a question. Yes. Um, does the Society of Cincinnati election automatically get you membership in Sons of the American Revolution? No. It's, uh, I would say, there are, their standards are a little higher because it's to be uh, right. selected. Uh, well, 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 basically, say. you're looking at having to have been an officer mm -hmm. uh, of a certain rank and position and things like that. Whereas in the Sons of the American Revolution, it doesn't matter. In fact, your ancestor didn't have to necessarily have been a soldier in the militia or the continental line. Uh, they could have just provided aid to the militia in the local area or the continental line. Uh, and I have some ancestors who I could get on, on as supplementals who one gave a, a keg of gunpowder and the other gave sides of beef and wheat and corn and things like that. So it's a uh, society that's not that difficult to get in. It's a lineage society, much like the, the Daughters of the American Revolution. But as a society, we have three goals uh, in, our, in our society, things that we work on. Uh, nationally as well as locally in the chapters. We have educational, patriotic, and historical goals that we strive to accomplish. And that's what I really want to talk to you a little bit about tonight because it fits into uh, something that uh, I have, uh, I've spoken to you about with a great dedication that's coming up. Uh, with our educational goals, we sponsor a number of youth contests uh, based on historical and patriotic themes. We have a essay contest, night essay contest for 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. Um, we have the, the state, and the nation, the nationally, they've had it for a while. The state has been out of it for a while. And Georgia has had five national winners in this. It's a rumball orations contest, which we're getting back into this year. The state of Georgia Society is, and I am chairman of that committee. Uh, we have a fourth grade poster contest which we're trying to expand and get out into the elementary schools more and more as we can. Uh, our winner last year, this past year, uh, was from H.H. Uh, Jones Elementary in Bremen and uh, did quite well. I think finished like uh, fourth place in the state. Although he could go on to the national competition, uh, it was a good thing. It's a good thing to get to the fourth graders in school uh, and get them interested in history and, and projects and things like that. Um, we inform the community about the events and, and philosophical basis of the American Revolution and the Constitution. We don't just talk to schools, although we try to get into schools more than we probably do anywhere else. But you know, even like tonight, uh, I've been to with the chapter and with the state. I've, I've spoken in probably half a dozen or more historical societies around Metro Atlanta on various topics. Um, and one of the things, and I'll be right back so you don't need to move your Okay. Uh, one of you received a copy of 
this. And I brought a bunch, and I will leave with you, and you can just pass them around, the, uh, the history of Georgia counties and the names, that, that the reason they were named those counties or towns or cities based on uh, men who served, or women, as Nancy Hart, who had who contributed to the American Revolution, whether they were from Georgia or somewhere else. But we did try to make uh, historical programs to the public as well as to schools uh, and organizations like yours, genealogical societies, uh, and you know groups like that. <clears throat> we help people locate and evaluate genealogical records and do historical research. Uh, ideally, it's in, in mind that we will secure members, but sometimes that doesn't happen so much because if you, you know, if you've done genealogy, but you know, sometimes you run into that brick wall and you can't make the link and we have that happen with some of the people that would love to be members, even of the DAR, but sometimes until that link is found, you know, you just have to sort of hold your breath or be patient. But we have, that's our educational goals, and we, we focus strongly across the state uh, with that in mind, that, and getting with teachers, we're working now with teachers groups uh, across the state, as public schools, private schools, as well as homeschool associations. Uh, to work with them to get out and teach American history, especially the American Revolution and the early period of the Republic and the Constitution. But we, we will go a step further and we'll talk about other historical things as well. <clears throat> we have patriotic goals, which is pretty much what people associate us with, I think, is more the patriotic celebrations, the uniforms and the parades and things that we're in. But we try to inspire the community that we live in with, with the principles on which our nation was founded. And one such way would be to march in parades, to wear uniforms like this, which with the hat, we're, we're usually on the float, greeted with, hey, there's a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> and so it give, does give us an opportunity you know, to do a little education there too, uh, as well. But, uh, we maintain and extend the institutions of American freedom. We do. A uh, question, what sort of uniform are you wearing? Uh, what, what sort of uh, function and rank would that be? OK, uh, the, the uniform that I, I'm, I have on, which is our uh, State and Society Color Guard uniform, is a replica of the uniform worn by George Washington's staff officers. Rank-wise, it would probably be, I think, a major. Uh, the the Epilis, they had some more one some, some of them wore two, some had stars, and they had different designs on it. So without getting into all of that, we just chose the two athletes because it looks better, I guess. But basically, it would be basically like a major uh, in on Washington staff. But the colors uh, are pretty much true. I think the uniform looks like Washington had on this is almost like this. It's, it's probably maybe a little deeper blue, uh, but you know, this is it. I'm curious, for, for field soldiers, what would their uh, uniforms look like? Would they be very uh, non-uniform? Pretty much, yeah, not, not much uniformity at all. Even in the Continental Line, uh, we typically think of a, a coat like this, uh, knee breeches, maybe not the waistcoat, uh, but they came in all shapes except for some regiments. They had a, a more particular uniform. But then you get out into some ones like uh, my uh, Patriot Ancestor of North Carolina, it's 10th Continental Line. They had a white linen suit that looked almost like buckskin with the fringe and everything. It was not a uniform like this. But he was in the Continental Line. And in the militia, they just they wore whatever they had. And sometimes it was pretty much nothing but, uh, but rags and things like that. But yeah, there was not much of a uniform other than Washington staff. Washington himself and some of the bigger uh, armies probably under like Nathaniel Green and uh, mm -hmm. Israel Putnam and a few of those gentlemen like that. Um, we help to carry out the promises expressed in the preamble to the Constitution. Uh, a lot of the things that we do, we do programs on uh, Constitution uh, Week, uh, Veterans Day. Uh, we, I wish, wish we could with the 4th of July and Flag Day and some of those at the schools, but we do participate in things in the community and make the awareness there. We provide recognition for public service. Uh, our chapters, the 
particularly you know, been active there uh, this past year. We, the society, the National Society has a fire uh, commendation medal for firemen, a law enforcement commendation medal for police law enforcement, and a, a new one, uh, a commendation medal for ENT uh, people. Uh, this past year, we gave uh, Douglas County and Carroll County uh, medals, all total about eight medals to firemen, police, or sheriff, and EMTs uh, for exemplary service in the line of duty. And they were all nominated by their superiors uh, in those positions. Uh, and it's something that we're, we're proud of and try to stress more and more that we recognize people for what they do. We honor and respect and support veterans. Uh, we have lots of things to do with veterans. We uh, have members who uh, take things to the veterans' hospitals. Uh, we try to include veterans uh, with uh, the outings that we have. We have uh, an SARDAR dinner in December. We have an SARDAR picnic uh, in Carroll County, and we try to and get veterans to come and, and go there and get them out of where they are. Not necessarily in the hospital, but like in the nursing homes, or a lot of them, uh, especially <coughs> in this area too, stay at home and are taken care of by family members, and we take and try to get them out as well. The last area of goals, and the one I want to focus a little bit on because of uh, what's coming up, is we commemorate as historical goals, and we commemorate the ride memorials to people and events of the American Revolution. Uh, on June the 2nd, and I have some sheets here, I'll pass these around, we're going to hold a grave marker dedication ceremony for William A. Goggins, who's buried up at Bethany Baptist Church just north of Tallapoosa. One of the projects that the state has undertaken is to mark the grave of every Revolutionary War soldier buried in Georgia. That's part of it. And then the other is to see if we can find others that have not been designated or have not been marked. Uh, Goggins uh, was a soldier, uh, I guess from the, his, going to his biography, he was probably about 16 years old when he joined the South, one of the units in the South Carolina militia. Uh, within a short time, he was engaged in the Battle of Kings Mountain, South Carolina, where he was wounded. And he continued his service. We don't know sure exactly how long his service, but he was wounded at least twice more in conflicts with the Tories. Once he was wounded with, uh, in the, with a blow of a broadsword on the head and left for dead on the field of battle, and he survived that. Uh, after the war, he uh, moved to Tennessee. Uh, he eventually moved to Alabama, and when his second wife also died, he moved to this part, at least I say this part, it was Carroll County at the time before the boundaries changed, to live with uh, one of his sons uh, in attractive land just, I think, about five miles north of the downtown area of Tallapoosa. Uh, he lived to be 94 years old. Uh, it was a, I think they called them road commissioners at the time. He was a road commissioner for Carroll County. Uh, he was a very, apparently, a very religious man and a devout Baptist uh, and was recognized in uh, great tribute in his obituary, uh, which is in the Jacksonville, Alabama newspaper, uh, dated June 8, 1852. And I'll only read just a very small part of it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, in his early life, his parents immigrated to the state of South Carolina and settled in the Newberry District. And the subject of this notice was quite young. The war broke out, and though he was about 16 years old, a desire for liberty, a heart burning for the good and welfare of his country, he fled to North Carolina for refuge and took up arms in the defense of his country and joined Colonel Williams in the siege at the Battle of Kings Mountain. They have North Carolina, but we know today South Carolina. 
that battle, he was wounded in his left shoulder. Sometime after that, on his return to South Carolina in a scouting party, he was shot to the left leg with a musket ball. After he got well in another scouting party, he was cut down with a broadsword by the Tories and left with the blood streaming from his forehead, supposed to be dead. After his recovery, he again joined his companions and continued in service in the war until the end of, of uh, until peace was declared. And it talks about his marriage and his moving to Carroll County. Would you um, leave us a copy of that? I can make you a copy and, and send it to you, or you have a copy of it. Uh, yes. Uh, I'd like to recommend him for our museum as he was in Harrison County most of his time, was he? Well, it was Carroll. Which became well, Harrison after his death, yes. Right. But, yeah, I mean, he, yeah, y'all can still claim you will it. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's been like this that we, we look for to, to show the, 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 the wide array of service that was rendered to this country as it was being created. Um, I'll talk a little bit about this, the ceremony, but we have uh, written by men of the, in the, actually some women, their wives, in the Sons of the American Revolution. It's a two-volume series called Georgia Revolutionary Soldiers and Sailors, Patriots, and Pioneers, uh, which has, not all, the soldiers, Revolutionary War soldiers, buried in Georgia and roughly where they're buried, because it's not all of them, because some of them are not in here. Uh, I, I mentioned that we, we have this for sale. If, if the group or even the library would be interested in purchasing these. We have these for, uh, we have a special amount for 50, two volumes for 50 bucks. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a good addition. We have had, uh, I've already gotten comments, because uh, I could, I don't know why they put my name on the plate at Neil Lomason. Uh, I guess because I was the one that presented it for the chapter. But I've had people call me saying that they found some Revolutionary War ancestors, but it also helped them make some, gene, some uh, links in genealogy. I'll pass each one around so you can take a look at that. But on June the 2nd at the uh, grave marking for Patriot Goggins, uh, I invite you to, to all come and I've uh, uh, spoken about your participation uh, in that. Hopefully you would like to read for the, uh, the local historical society. But uh, it's a pretty big to do, and I think we're expecting um, our vice president, the chapter vice president, has spoken to a number of people, especially Alabama Goggins. Uh, and it looks like we may have a, a really good turnout uh, for this uh, from uh, Alabama and Tennessee and Georgia. Uh, haven't been able to get too much contact with people in South Carolina. But we will have the, the, our, our color guard. Um, with colors. Uh, our vice president, he has about 30 colonial flags, and we've made flag staffs for them. We have them, uh, pipes to be driving to the ground, and we have an, like an avenue of flags that will lead up to the thing. Uh, color guard, there'll be some, a few uh, short speeches, uh, proclamation, uh, working on getting the, uh, I guess the chairman of the Harrison County Commission to a proclamation uh, family somebody in the family will at least give a brief biography of uh, Goggins uh, we'll have the dedication of the marker which we secured a, a marker from the VA uh, the one Bethany said uh, they wanted to be marble that was flush with the ground as opposed to the upright marker and we'll also have a bronze SAR Patriot marker that we will put there as well uh, we'll have a militia unit, uh, revolutionary <coughs> militia unit with a fire and musket salute. We have a uh, bagpipe. We may have two bagpipers, in fact. Uh, and we will also have uh, a bugler, I think, from, uh, I can't remember if he's from Harrison County High School or Greenman High School, one or the other. We'll play taps at the end. Uh, and then we'll have, in the process, we'll also have different groups, SAR, DAR chapters, uh, historical societies, and, and other groups to uh, present Reeves uh, in honor of Goggins as a patriot. Uh, and that's pretty much what things that we try to do. I think we do more for all of the goals that we have and a great dedication than probably maybe anything else that we do. Uh, 
we did one for uh, Thomas Hilly down in Kirk County last April. We had close to 200 people, most of our family members, came from eight states. Um, we got one SAR member, but the, the good that we did for the family and drawing people together in the community uh, just feels a good thing because it brings recognition of a period of history that wasn't. This part of Georgia didn't, wasn't set up yet.